So in the shop here, I've got this Yamaha Virago with a strip spark plug hole. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly what I did to fix it using a time cert kit. So stick around. Now you can see the plug does thread in, but you'll see here quickly, kind of loosey goosey, you know. Now you can see the plug does thread in, but if we look at it kind of square here, you can see the plug going off to the right. So it's definitely crooked in there and you're not gonna be able to see this but there's probably three sixteenths of a gap from where it needs to be height wise to where it actually needs to seat so just added complication here i didn't notice it at first but yeah once i went to uh, change the plugs in this thing i could definitely tell it wasn't right so the attempt the goal here will be to thread this thing in in a straight fashion and we'll go from there all right, so here let me show you exactly why I'm choosing this tool. So this is a time cert kit. And this particular one is for M14 plugs. Now I'll link the actual time cert website. That way you can look at what you need. But I chose this kit for specific reasons here. Now you can see it has a lot of different pieces to it. And the one we're going to start off with is going to be the tap here. Now the main reason I chose this is because I didn't want to put a drill bit in here and put more uh, potential shavings into the cylinder than I had to. So this is the step tap that comes with it. And this is kind of the expensive part. So we, uh, we have our existing threads here, which are gonna help guide and pull while we cut our new threads on the outer portion here. You can see it's a larger diameter. That larger, uh, that larger diameter is what fits our new insert. So our insert, is different than say the uh, the other time cert kit, the ones where you seat on top, because these are gonna seat at the bottom and that is gonna lock it into the cylinder head. And that's really, really important to me because I want this one to be a permanent repair. That's really structurally sound. Now, the way we do this is we start with our tap, we feed this in, we cut our new insert threads, okay? And then what we do is we use this tool. This thing's pretty cool. See, it has two cutting surfaces on it. We have one here and one there. This, uh, this topmost cutting surface is going to be our sealing surface for the top of the ring here, the top of the insert. And then our outer one is going to actually be our new spark plug sealing surface, which is very, very important because I, I, I ran the risk of not having a potential uh, perfect spark plug crush washer seal on the, uh, like if I was to run just a regular time cert in it. So I, I wanted to spend the extra money and get this kit. Now this, this kit right here with the inserts, this thing was like 208 bucks. It's, it's not cheap, but I want a quality repair here. So included with this are just some tools. Let's see here, you have a driver, like a basically like a T-handle setup. So this is your driver for everything. So it's gonna, it all works together. It's a really well-designed kit. I actually have the same thing an M12 for my CBX because that thing has a screwed up thread hole in it. Now I've mentioned this and the other time cert kit which you seat from the top. Now another option I've used before with good success is this thing from Powerbuilt Tools and this is called a back tap. This thing's kind of trick. And what this is designed to do, like let's say you have a few threads at the very top of the hole that are screwed up, but the, the ones in the bottom are, are still good, you know. You use this tool see this collapses down you insert this into the hole you expand the outside those threads expand into the good threads at the bottom of the cylinder and then you back this out and it will just just help guide and clean up those top threads that are screwed up but since our cylinder is just really screwed up uh, we got to go we got to go way more aggressive and use something more substantial like this now here what I'm doing is I'm raising the back of the bike up so I can rotate the wheel in gear, therefore rotating the engine because I want to minimize uh, any potential damage from chips that are inevitably going to fall into the engine. So here with the bore scope, I'm inserting the camera of course into that cylinder 
And what I'm going to be shooting for is both valves closed. So there I'm rotating the engine, exhaust valve is opening, and we're going to keep going until we see the exhaust valve close here in just a second. So exhaust valve is closed, I'm going to keep going, our intake valve opens, and then I'm going to go just past this and get on the compression stroke here. That way both valves are closed. And then I'm going to make sure I back the piston down just a little bit, which I'm going to explain here in depth in just a moment. Now to prepare for step one, you need to find the right insert. So this one matches our spark plugs. Okay. Now we are going to need to thread this in so it's actually extending. So the top here is actually extended about a quarter inch below the top of the hole. So setting it up like this, you can see that we're going to need to have the, th the tap in about that far from the hole in the cylinder. So that's going to leave us with right at about an inch and a half in total depth from the top of the hole to how far down it needs to extend. So what I did is I just cut, marked a piece of aluminum at an inch and a half. And I have confirmed there's my inch and a half. I have confirmed that we have at least that much room between the piston and the top of the hole because we don't want to thread the tap in and hit the piston. All right, it's time to begin. We're going to use the tap here and then we have to keep it as straight as we can and then it will cut our secondary threads. So I'm going to coat this with a little bit of grease and that's going to help prevent more chips from falling down into the engine. Now it is inevitable with this design that we're going to have a few in here, but the reason we set the engine up on more of a top dead center or at least close to top dead center with both valves closed is to make sure that we can blow this thing out when we're done and not put anything in the intake or exhaust or anything like that. So this will help, uh, help us, you know, get everything clean afterwards. So for now, put some grease on this thing. Now the moment of truth. Now it's probably going to be hard for you guys to see this because I have to use the alignment of my eye. Those first few were obviously going to be the most difficult because my goal is to realign it how it was from the factory and not that the cross threaded hole in here. So I have a good line of sight here. I know this is straight and it's starting to kind of draw itself in where it needs to be. So now just keep feeding this in. Right now it's about to touch the uh, outer section for the threads. Start cutting those. Just kind of removing it after uh, cutting a few threads here. So we're gonna clean the bit off just like you would a normal tap. Carefully run it back in. All right, as of now I can tell that I'm past the bottom of the hole, so I'm just gonna unthread this, clean the threads out one more time. So I can tell this thing cut some really good threads. It was, I just kept continuous downward pressure on it while holding it as straight as possible. And once it, once it kind of took hold of uh, its alignment, it really just, it guided itself in really well. Nice and clean. Look at them threads. Very nice. All 
All right, now that we have tapped the hole for this outer section of threads, the next step is to start cutting the seats. So what we're gonna do is re-thread this into the hole. And again, we're gonna have the back end of the threads here, which like extended down past the top of the hole about a quarter inch, okay? And then our seat cutter slides over and then we're gonna use the same tool here same tool to rotate it and this is going to cut the two sections of seats so we're going to cut both of them and then we're going to put in our insert and we'll be very close to being done all right getting ready to reinsert the tap in here and this is just going to act as the guide for the seat cutter i have grease on the very top of this portion here that way it's going to keep all of the shavings from falling down in let's thread this in Get moving on the next step. It's probably really close to where we need to be. Go a little further. All right. Kind of gauge how far in we are. Time for the seat cutter. Just going to grease up the outside a little bit here. And we'll just start cutting. I'm not pushing down really hard, I'm just keeping steady pressure, letting the tool work. I can tell I haven't made it to the second seat yet. We're very close. So we just started making contact with the outer seat and I'm going to show you what exactly we're looking for here. Now coming up over the, the insert, you can see the shiny metallic portion. That's our new seat and it's not uniform all the way around yet. We had just started cutting it so the goal is to cut just until that shiny area, the bright area, is uniform all the way around. And that will mean that we are deep enough to have a good spark plug washer seat. Right, just reinsert this and we just keep going. We're really close though. All right, we're over halfway there. might be there now. Let me check. I've got about one full revolution left to go with this thing. It's so close. And again, you can kind of see what we're looking for here. Just on that very back edge. Just a little dark on there. So I got about one full revolution left for the actual tool. And we will be there. All right, going in for that last little bit. Perfect. And there you have it. We have a nice uniform ceiling surface. Just took a couple rotations like I thought. Now I'm going to clean up the rest of the threads around here. I'm just going to use some uh, 
some tweezers and like some grease and just kind of pick those up before continuing. All right, time to back the actual tap out now. And with it, we should be bringing up the rest of the shavings. All right, here's the tap as I brought it out. You can see no shavings are below the threads. So I think we're doing pretty good. The repaired hole. Now we just have to put the insert in it. Last step. Okay, our final step is to do the actual thread insert. And we are, have our insert driver tool. So to do this, we're gonna use a little bit of oil. And this should only go on about halfway or so. So we're going to get it started. Okay. Now we'll take this and insert it in the cylinder head. And this should go down fairly easily until it meets that lower seat. And then we'll start fixing it in here. Okay, so, so as of now, the copper color section, that's the insert. That is seated up top here. It's against the lower seat that we cut. And now what we do is we insert the driver and that's gonna expand the bottom threads so it locks it in place. Now the way this should go should require a little bit of force to start, okay? We just keep going until it actually gets a little easier. And I can definitely feel it expanding the lower threads. There we go. Now it's getting now it's getting tighter. We just keep going. I can feel it's starting to loosen up. So we're pushing out of the bottom. All right. I'm confident with that. Now we just back it out. And there's our insert. That looks awesome. Now the new insert looks fantastic, but just to be careful, I got the bore scope again. Here in the bottom, you can see there are some shavings. Now, what I did is I went ahead and just inserted the air hose here, as you can see, and just worked on blowing this thing out, getting all those shavings out of the engine. Now the air hose worked fine on this, but you can see in this clip, we're going back in the cylinder. This is just after the first try. There's still a few little particles that you can see, but just want to let you guys know, I did go back and just keep repeating the process until the cylinder was very clean and there was no evidence of any shavings. So at that point, you know, it was great. I felt, I felt confident enough to go ahead and throw the plug in and get this thing fired up. So we ended up with a few shavings in the cylinder, but the fact that we took the precautions beforehand with no open valves and, and everything and set in one place, it was easy to get those things out. So 
Uh, just went back through with the uh, borescope camera and reconfirmed so there's none in there right now. And all that's left to do is insert the spark plug. Now think of note, there's actually a couple versions of this. So this is the washer seat type, and then there's also the taper seat, which uh, you know, you'll see taper seats on different types of cylinder heads and stuff like that, probably more in the automotive world. But just know there is an option for that. Again, I'll have the TimeCert website actually linked so you guys can see that stuff. Feels good to me. Ah, sigh of relief. All right. Fixed. have it I think this was a very very high quality repair on this thing and I really like I can't speak enough on that kit it was really well made it worked perfectly now uh, I don't know if you guys need to care or not but like, it's not like I'm sponsored I don't have any kind of affiliation with time cert but I do feel that was a really good kit so again you know I'll have that link below and uh, I just want to reiterate, I know there's a lot of different options here as far as thread repair, especially for spark plugs and stuff, but I chose this one based off of that exact situation there. I did a lot of reading on stuff, and I have other plug repair kits, but I felt this was the right tool for the job given the exact circumstances. So, you know, I appreciate all your input and stuff like that, but I chose this based on a specific reason for this specific bike. But anyway, I'm gonna end it off here. Hopefully that was really informative. I know there's probably a lot of other videos on how to do this. So this is just more kind of like documenting my, uh, my experience with it. But I hope you like it. Again, I hope you found it informative and I hope you guys check out some other videos on the channel. Subscribe if you haven't already, I'd really appreciate it. And uh, yeah, I'll end it off here. Thanks for watching.